What is going on everybody? Eric the Electric coming to you guys again with another video. Now, this is going to be a different video. This isn't going to be a huge eating video. This isn't going to be a um, crazy um, biking video or cycling video. This isn't going to be anything like that. This is going to be something I've been wanting to do for years now. This is going to be something that I've wanted to do ever since I started my recovery from anorexia. Now, many of you may know, many of you may not know, I am a recovering anorexic and have been for quite some time now. And this is the video that I'm going to be sharing with everybody that's my story. Uh, how it came to be about that I was diagnosed with anorexia and my journey through um, anorexia, which has been quite a journey, to put it that way. A lot of this, what you're going to see is very uh, graphic um, and there are a lot of disturbing images and a lot of disturbing videos, but I feel um, that it's best that I put my story up online. I have been contacted through um, by many individuals like myself, men who have been um, diagnosed and have been diagnosed with this, this issue and I feel like it's very prevalent right now in society. So um, I really want to get to it and really want to share it with everybody else. So I feel it really beneficial to share my story with the world and I really feel it's going to be beneficial to share my story with all of you, my subscribers. So stay tuned for the video guys. I gotta say, I never thought I could go from being a happy, carefree teenager to something like this in such an instant. To go from overweight, but happy, to something like that. What you guys are going to be seeing is um, my weight loss, which was pretty much the catalyst to me developing an eating disorder. So it started off pretty... I guess you could say healthy. I mean, I wasn't a uh, um, just a little slightly chubby teen. I was labeled uh, quote unquote obese by my doctor. So um, I needed to uh, lose weight, as was put it, as was put by my doctor, in order to get healthier again. And started off pretty slow but then got very very rapid as I wanted to keep going and going and going and also at the same time I also had a condition called gynecomastia that affects young teenagers that were my age that um, isn't so prevalent in these pictures mainly because I only took these when I was out of the shower but just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like um, it's pretty bad and it was pretty bad for me at least before I got my surgery. I'd always gotten teased about it. This isn't mine but uh, this is an extreme example but um, mine was very very bad and it was something I was really self-conscious of and it was something that's me after the weight loss. Um, I was very self-conscious of it and it's something that really was a huge thing for me. I thought if I lost more weight that I'd be able to get rid of it and be happy and um, that was pretty much just a, a lie that you know eventually grew to more things that made me unsatisfied with my body and like most guys um, you know it, it got worse so um, this was me after the weight loss I of course when you lose weight in high school everybody starts paying attention to you you get more popular and such was the case with me I got more popular I started hanging out with the popular kids. Eventually I got in a band. I was a huge guitar geek, but um, I got in a band and everyone started to, to pay attention more to me. During this time too, I was actually um, a huge catalyst, another catalyst for the weight loss was getting put on this medication right here, just Concerta. So Concerta is a ADHD medication. So it makes you lose your appetite. You really just don't care about much. And it helped fuel me. I guess this was my fuel. This is like an early workout video that I found. And uh, I really just didn't have to rely on food anymore. I could go into the gym, um, pretty much do whatever, and not have to worry about eating as much. So I got scared of carbs. I got scared of everything that was um, that I was used to eating. And I just I, I eventually learned to maintain on one, two meals a day, and it was a granola bar and. Um, some yogurt that's pretty much what I ate and that, that, that was me after um, 
you know, I was dropped to about 160 pounds here. And then I discovered this website around early 2010. This is bodybuilding.com. So over the years, bodybuilding.com is actually, the forums have gotten a lot more popular. And I'm sure a lot of people know me from this website. And this is how I got to discover nutrition and discover um, different ways of controlling my weight, counting calories, counting everything I put into my body. This is where I started on the forums over here is Eric the Electric and um, I eventually started a weight training log and also at the same time became consumed by every ounce of um, you know nutrition, carbs, everything that I put in my body. Like I said, I just I it consumed me. I, I got fixated on the wrong things at 16, 17 years old and found this, which intermittent fasting, which I found was a great way for me to um, be on a controlled um, eating regimen that made me not have to be normal like every other, you know, every other teenager. So I began to practice intermittent fasting, and my parents grew concerned. And um, obviously, I was too blinded by what I was doing to really understand why they were concerned, and I lost weight like crazy. And um, this is another video. Uh, and my weight plummeted even more uh, and I really didn't eat. when you're in that state you're already you know you're already just consumed by it you don't really see it yourself so eventually my relatives their friends began to say things and you know we I got taken to a therapist and uh, my doctor had to step in and my blood work was all over the, the place and I went in for my physical and I just uh, I went from being one wide end of the spectrum at obese to underweight and that's when my doctor t approached my parents about me having a problem so we went and saw a therapist that was specializing in, in eating disorders but for women so it was very awkward at first but i got put on a plan which was to have my parents feed me and take away all control over me so that's just called the matzo method so if you're not familiar with it, it's just your parents having complete control over what you eat and you make, you're basically a kid again. So you get treated like you're a child and it's very demeaning and it was very, very hard for me at first, but until I realized that it was for the greater good, it was for me to get healthy again. Uh, I was, I was pissed off at everybody. I was pissed off at the world. I, I was depressed. I just didn't know how to function anymore. Um, and you know, things got great though. I, I eventually got my restored weight, and I got to get back to normal again. But something just really never seemed right with me. I got really strong. I discovered weightlifting, and I really, I took it to uh, um, be a passion of mine. And everyone knew me as the strong kid. And that was cool, and I felt great about that. And uh, my one thing really never left me though is I was never satisfied with the way I looked. I always felt like I still had more fat on me. This was me before uh, getting surgery for my gynecomastia. I was just covering, obviously, my nipples, where I held most of my my fat and everything like that. Um, anyways, I got very, very unsatisfied with the way I looked still. Um, and eventually plummeted back down to depression and I was taken off my medication which even got me more depressed so um, that's right around the time I did relapse and got to be even more underweight. The doctor, uh, my actual, not my therapist but my psychologist that prescribed my ADHD medication, I never really will understand this to this day why I was taken off one of the highest dosages, completely cold turkey. And I know this may be a little disturbing to look at, but this is what I got down to on my lowest, which is around 120 pounds. Um, this is around six, six months later. Um, taken off cold turkey and um, pretty much left to fend for myself, which was hard for me. I bought one of these off the internet and secretly counted every step I took um, and this was the summer before I had to go to college and this is uh, on my arm every single day. I even wore this to the treatment center that 
I was forced to go into before going to college. And this was one of the highest steps I took. Um, I was up, as you can see, every morning at five, every morning to walk obsessively with bricks in my backpack before I had to go into this treatment program that was an all-day program just because I was that petrified of having to to gain weight and get healthier and this is what I ended up being at um, again pretty scary to look at but you know that's that's where I was at and um, I cried myself to sleep every night hoping that I could one day become normal again and, you know, I, 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 I hoped for it, and it never seemed to come. Eventually it did come, though, and I eventually went to college, and I proved myself to that treatment team in that facility that I was capable of living alone, living, not, not alone, but with other people, and I had a shot at becoming a normal human being again. And to this day, I'm still proud to say that I proved everybody wrong. And I turned 18 and moved out as an adult male living with an eating disorder. And I managed for a long time. I lived uh, my freshman year in the dorm. And I was that weird kid. I was so weird. And I, I had a full-blown eating disorder and tried to hide it from everybody else. And everybody knew it. And uh, I feel like I did a very poor job at that, but um, it really taught me a lot. After my freshman year, I decided to um, move out of the dorm and get my own apartment, which was one of the worst decisions of my life. Uh, living alone at the ripe age of, well, I was still 18 at the time, but I was pretty much 19 when I moved in. And anyways, living alone at that time is not good for anybody and I eventually succumbed to uh, depression again and fell back into another relapse. That was uh, one of the worst times of my life and I really, up until that point, I had never dealt with depression before. And I'd always thought depression was just another thing that, you know, came and went with people. Um, but I can remember waking up one day and just never wanting to, just wishing I never would have woken up that day. Um, I was hunched over in a hoodie and had four layers of blankets on me at, you know, it was three in the afternoon and it was 85 degrees outside in San Diego, California and I will never forget that day. I could never, I couldn't even walk outside. Um, that was one of the worst, if not the worst moment of my life. Eventually, my parents had to uh, have an intervention of some sort on me, and I had to go to treatment for the second time. Um, I went to treatment at a place that's actually really well known, so I'm not going to reveal the name of the place, but that was what got my life back. And I discovered the 12 steps and the whole deal, and uh, went into a full residential place and went into a partial hospitalization program. and. Um, eventually stepped down and came back home. Um, that was, uh, again, one of the hardest times in my life and without it, I, I definitely wouldn't have survived. 